So we're going to be exploring portraits in the style of Kehinde Wiley. So what we've done already is we've done some selfies. We cut out the uh, perimeter of that selfie. We traced it onto a pattern paper. We used razors to relieve some of the pattern to go back onto our faces in about three areas. And then uh, we printed out a grid and we trace that grid with Sharpie markers onto the plastic, which now can be laid on top of our image. This way our resource image will remain kind of clean, so to speak, and we can lift this up to kind of see details, but still keep our grid. We wanna make sure that nothing shimmies, so we've put two pieces of tape on a side so that you know it, it'll act like a hinge. If you only have one piece, things are gonna slide around a bit. So sometimes there's going to be squares with nothing in it, and other times there's gonna be squares with lots of things in it. And then some squares might be a little bit challenging uh, because we have details that really add a sense of likeness to an image. So in the squares that are outside of the portrait, I would suggest going for darker sorts of applications. And then within the face, we're gonna try and get the tones to kind of match, but sometimes we're gonna be using color, sometimes we'll be using um, black and white. It's really gonna depend on, on what you're doing with this. So I've created this matrix, and what I have in here is going across the top are um, black and white, realistic, warm, cool, monochrome, contrasting, analogous, opposite, black paper, gray paper. And that means that you, you would use black paper as your base or gray paper as your base. And then we have some uh, techniques coming down here, pointillism, crosshatch, acrylic, pencil, color pencil, oil pastel, chalk or charcoal, watercolor, craft items, collage, stencil, cubism, Van Gogh style, pop art manga style, Rococo or ornate, paint by number, and then you might come up with something even different, maybe something you've discovered even on TikTok. And then by matching these up, we can come up with a technique that you can do in the square. And the point is we're trying to do a different technique in each square as kind of a way to get familiar with lots of different things and we have a chance to explore. So um, for, the, for our application of this, I actually would prefer you to start with some of the simple squares and we're going to kind of label them and then build up to the more challenging ones. So this way you're kind of getting practice as you go. So uh, for our first square outside there, I could pretty much use anything. So um, because there's nothing in there, I'm just going to pick out something. I have a, a pattern piece of paper and we're cutting these for my project to four by four inches. I have a paper cutter set up and I put some blue tape on that paper cutter so you can easily kind of line things up and cut them. And we'll do a demonstration about that for safety for my students. So let's say this is what I want in the back one. This is kind of dark and this is blank so I can do anything I want in that particular one. Now, because this is A1 and I've labeled these A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I want to make sure that I know where this belongs because we're going to create a pile and then put that pile back together. So A1, I can turn it over. Now if it matters which way it goes, then you want to make sure whatever's up stays up as you label it. And on the back, I'm going to go ahead and put A1. And then I know later on when I put this together that that's going to be my first square. So let's say I want to do an actual technique from the um, matrix. Oh, and I will need to record that. So um, we're just going to say that that was a pattern. Okay, and I've done that uh, and it's color. And I would say that's cool colors. So I'm going to go over here and check that off. So I did a cool color pattern. So let's say I'm going to do a square that's a little bit more complicated and we're going to do this eye one. So first thing I want to do is with an eye um, and it fills up the square. If you get it kind of off, it might ruin the likeness of it. Now likeness isn't very important that it looks like the person. I mean, that's you're not graded on that, but it is something that most students would like to achieve. So what I tell students to do is break up that square into four smaller squares. So I can just hand 
draw in some lines, and then I can go ahead and divide that up. Okay. And then I have my square, and because I have this sort of grid thing, I can find out where my middle pieces are just by kind of following the grid that I've laid out here. And then I look at what's going on in the square. I see that the eye is going almost to this halfway mark. There's a fold above the eye, and then we have the eye itself. So I'm gonna make some marks. I feel like it, the fold of the eye is coming off here, and the corner of the eye is coming around here. Then I have the, and I'm trying to find out where is it crossing over lines or touching edges. So the eye crosses about here, and I would say that's a third way above that line. And I see it crossing at that angle. And it goes over to here, and I would say that's about a quarter of the way on this side. So there's half, and there's about a quarter. So now I can kind of join these lines, and I wanna try and match what I see happening in the photograph. So this one kind of arches up a little bit, and then it starts arching over. And then from here, it kind of feels a little bit flat. And then we have the fold of the eye comes up, follows that same angle, and then it seems to join over here. Now I get the bottom lid, and you could put the lines going all the way across if you feel like that's gonna be helpful to you to kind of see them. So the bottom edge of the inside of the eye is crossing just a little bit above that halfway mark. And the eye joins about halfway on this side. And then I can start joining these dots. And I think the eye connects not at the corner, but inside a little bit. It seems to be in a diagonal from this corner, so diagonal up. Comes over. And then I catch the uh, color of the eye. It seems to come around and touch down here. Comes around here. And we know the eye is kind of like a donut with the pupil in the middle. And the pupil should be about a third of the way across the eyeball. If it's too small or too large, it's just gonna look odd. And then I can start to put in eyelashes and things like that. Now I get to decide which technique I'm gonna use. So I did the drawing portion of it. I broke it down into four parts. Um, so I could do this as uh, black and white, and um, I guess I'll do black and white pencil, get that out of the way. So then I would go in and use my techniques on this, and then I would go ahead and check out which one this is. So that's D5. So on the back, upside right, I write D5. Okay. So we're going to do that with each square. If you're gonna be using any water media, make sure that your paper is fairly thick, like a watercolor paper. Uh, if you want to use canvas, I do have some 12 by 12 inch canvas. So if our squares are four by four, that means that you can fit three across, three down. So, you know, maybe I wanna do this whole corner with one canvas, three by three, or maybe I wanna do this chunk three by three. You can kind of do that. And then at the very end, we're going to assemble all these little squares and big squares from the back. So we'll line them up and we would put some uh, tape on the back or maybe we would use fabric and glue. We will kind of figure that out as we go. Some students may even choose to sew pieces together. You know, maybe you want to take your paper pieces and sew them together. So we can kind of have some fun with that application of this, right? So um, let's get started with this. Start labeling up your drawing and then again, start with the simple squares and then leave the complex squares towards the end uh, because by doing the simple squares, you'll start to get experience and be more comfortable with doing the more complex squares. Whenever you come across something that is too complex, break it up into its simple parts and then you'll be able to handle it quite well.